welcome to the first class of uh, introduction to flight AE705. Let us quickly see what is there in store for you. Now, this course is basically built of capsules. What is a capsule? Anyone? What is a capsule? Yes. Okay. So, according to you, a capsule is a small container that contains some some parts. Okay. Anybody would like to add to this? Huh, Let us go here. Amri is here in the front. What is meant by a capsule? Quickly. Dose, ah, dose is of capsules. So, let us see. So, there are going to be many, many capsules in this course. I have shown you only the 5 capsules and I hope that there is no overdose because of these capsules because there are going to be 10 capsules. So, as you uh, take part in this course, you are going to consume 10 capsules. Okay. So, let us see what are the constituents of each capsule. So, for example, the first capsule consists of two lectures. The first one will introduce you to various components of an aircraft. The second one will talk about atmosphere and the properties of atmosphere. So, similarly, capsule number 2 will be on the first part of fluid mechanics or introductory fluid mechanics. The contents are listed there. The third capsule will delve further in fluid mechanics. We will go to Reynolds number boundary layer and the types of flows and how to measure pressure and speed. After that, we will go to the fundamentals of aerospace engineering or flight airfoils and how lift is generated, how the pressure and lift coefficients are calculated. And then the last capsule before mid-sem would be on what is called as the finite wings, wings. Okay. After mid-sem we go to capsule 6 where we have a quick look at the types of propulsive systems because after this, we will look at the effect of engine on various uh, components of uh, or various flight performance characteristics. Uh, we look at study flight, then we go to capsule 7, we look at ceilings, climbing, turns, pull ups. And then the two most important things for a transport aircraft range and endurance and for any aircraft take off and landing. Capsule 9 will consist of two interesting chapters or lectures one on energy methods or energy maneuverability methods and then a VN diagram. This VN diagram is going to be a self study kind of a capsule because we have already recorded a lecture on VN diagram like this many, many years ago. So, we will try to fish out that lecture and make it available to you as self study. And then the last capsule is introduction to static stability only the longitudinal part and then control systems and neutral point. Okay. So, yes, 10 capsules is really a heavy dose. All right. Now, one question that some students asked me, I must share with you a very interesting anecdote. I was once uh, asked to teach a course on aircraft design. Not here, it was a university in Singapore called NTU. I was there for a year as a visiting professor. So, I heard some murmurs among the students. And one murmur I heard was, why have we got this guy from India to come and teach aircraft design? So, I thought it is important for me to tell you about my background. The purpose is not to glorify myself in front of you. I do not need to do that actually, okay, because I am not selling something to you. Anyway, it is a core course. You have to be here. Whether it is me or Professor Menezes or Professor Prabhu, Ramchandran, someone will teach this course okay, and you have to be here. So, I'm, I gain nothing by selling myself to you, but I just want to reassure you that guys, I am suitably qualified to teach this course. So, for that purposes, I think you have a right to know who is this guy, why should we listen to him and more important, why should we believe him, what is his background, how much does he know, what is his training, correct. 
So it is important. So I will start with academic qualifications. The first uh, point which will reassure you is that this guy is a core aerospace engineer. He is not an electrical engineer converted to aero or mechanical engineer converted to aero. He is a diseased aerospace engineer because not one, one could be by mistake or because of uh, rank or because of you know uh, could not get any other branch, okay. Not two because that could be a mistake. Third degree also he has done in aeronautical engineering that means Pagal is definitely crazy in aeronautical engineering. So what are my degrees? My degrees are a bachelor's degree from Punjab Engineering College now called as PEC University of Technology. I am very happy that there is one student from the current PEC Aero. Udit, can you introduce yourself? Just stand up. Uh, you will see about him also a little bit more. Uh, he is a student of my college. He is there and he is uh, as an intern he is working here. So this is my bachelor's degree. It was way back before many of you were even born probably. Okay. So that tells you how old I am. Then I went and did a master's degree from IIT Madras and this master's was actually sponsored by HAL because after my graduate degree, I, I had one job in HAL as a graduate engineering trainee and I also had an admission in IISC Bangalore for MTech in Aero. So both my hands were full but I wanted both. I wanted not only MTech but also a job. Because as you know after MTech also there is sometimes a question mark about what job will you get. So I was keen on the core job. I had an MTech degree in hand, not in hand of course, an admission only and also a job. I wanted both. So then I was fortunate that there was another scheme called as the design trainee stroke management trainee scheme of HAL in which if selected you would be sent to IIT Madras for MTech. Now if you become a management trainee, you go for a special degree called as aircraft production engineering. If you do a design trainee which I chose, then you get to do MTech in your own department. So I chose to be a design trainee and I did masters from IIT Madras. But because I was sponsored by HAL, I had to do a 3 year masters. That means the masters took 3 years. Okay. Because some people are looking at 84 to 86 and they are saying, Lagta ye fail ho gaya tha ek saal. Okay. He must have, he must have flunked in something or I did not flunk in anything. <laughs> I had a decent CPI. But after coursework, there was a break. We were sent to HAL and then we did our MTech project in the, in the factory. Okay. I was in HAL Kanpur when I was uh, doing my project. The third degree was after many, many years and that was a PhD which I did from College of Aeronautics. Uh, this is without any doubt the best place in the world to do a PhD especially in aircraft design. So all my specializations is during bachelors also I was interested in aircraft design, masters also and PhD is in aircraft design and this PhD was uh, fully funded by a scholarship called as the Commonwealth Scholarship Commission in the UK. Even now this is available. Every year they send typically one MTech and one PhD student to UK for aerospace engineering, fully funded, okay. Right. Then work experience. So before coming to IIT Bombay, I have actually worked in HAL for 5 years. This is because, any guesses? Why did I work for 5 years in HAL? Therefore, therefore there is a bond, correct. So because HAL sponsored my MTech, there was a 5 year bond and I enjoyed those 5 years because after 3 and a half years I got a promotion from HAL Kanpur shifted to Nasik. As you can see in HAL Kanpur, I worked on structures, structural modification, structural support and when I came to Nasik, I became an aerodynamicist and flight test engineer. I had the great honor of working with Wing Commander Rakesh Sharma. He was the test, uh, deputy test pilot and I was the flight test engineer and the aerodynamicist. At that time, HAL was doing the overall of MiG-21 and manufacturing MiG-27. 
So, I have experience on both of them. So, after completing 5 years in HAL, then I shifted to IIT Bombay first as a lecturer because I did not have a PhD. I came in from HAL with experience of 5 years and therefore, I was offered the position of a lecturer and then while being in IIT Bombay, I got this scholarship and I went for PhD to UK. And uh, around 5 years ago, I was promoted as a professor. So, that is my work experience. All right. I want to share with you some information about aircraft on which I have worked during my stint in HAL. So, can anybody identify this aircraft? Just raise your hands if you know what they are. Only one, two people in the class. Anybody here? Yes. Speak out, sir. Dornier, that is the company. Which model? <laughs> the Coast Guard is. That is not a, that is not a uh, model of the aircraft. Dornier, made. Dornier is a company, Dornier GmbH, which is no more now. But, huh, that is just the basic model, okay. This, this Dornier 228-201, which is a dedicated model for India. That is right. This is the Dornier 228-201. As you can see, it is a, a twin turboprop with high wing. Which one is this? How can you say MiG-27? One minute, because of the shape. How about MiG-23? No, I think it is very difficult for someone to identify between MiG-21 and 23. Radom is very similar for both. I will tell you where the difference is. The difference is in the intake. Somewhere here do you notice there is something called as a splitter plate. We will read about this in our uh, course. This particular plate, this particular plate, there is a slight difference between MiG-23 and MiG-27, okay. So, by looking at the splitter plate, I can say yes, this is MiG-27M, okay. So, I worked on this aircraft in Nasik. Then there are other aircrafts I worked on, which is this one, Hindustan Piston Trainer 32, HPT 32. This aircraft was used till recently by the Indian Air Force for ab initio pilot training, not ab initio sorry, for, uh, for pilot trainings. Okay. And then we worked on a modified version of that one, which one is that? which is the modification of HPT. Uh, many of you may not know this. See, this will be known only to service officers or people who have worked. So, I do not expect you to know. Uh, but, so do you know, sir, what is the modification? This is the HTT-34, which is a conversion, okay, from a piston to a turbo conversion. So, HPT is Hindustan Piston Trainer, it is a piston prop engine. HTD-34 is a Hindustan turbo trainer that is a turbo prop engine. So, HAL internally they converted the aircraft from piston prop to turbo prop. So, that is the one on the on your right that is one also I worked on. This one it is a very old aircraft. This is the HS-748, HS is Hawker Sidley also called as Avro, HS-748. Now it is obsolete. This is very difficult to guess. I do not know whether anybody can guess. Anybody? Do you have any idea? This is the Ardhra glider. It is a wooden glider, mostly made up of wood, very few metallic parts, uh, used for teaching pilots how to fly on gliders. It used to be used by flying clubs earlier. This was something that was uh, fabricated in HAL Nasik, HAL Kanpur on license, but now it is obsolete. So, I am very fortunate to have worked on wooden gliders, metallic aircraft, turboprops, piston props, jets, military. So, I have a very nice uh, wide exposure, okay. I have also flown aircraft in the cockpit. So, this one 
Anybody knows? It's a very old aircraft called Pushpak. This is a aircraft which uh, I had flown this thing in Chennai Flying Club in Meenabakkam in Chennai. And the reason was very interesting as a mark of uh, you can say respect to IIT Madras, the Chennai Flying Club had given 8 hours to the aerospace department for the students to experience flying. So, 8 hours were earmarked for the department. My good luck that no student volunteered to take those. So, I cancelled my return train ticket and I took all the 8 hours and I flew for 8 hours in this aircraft. 6 flights total duration will be 8 flying hours. That was during my M Tech. May 1984 is when I flew on this aircraft 8 hours. And then when I went for PhD to Cranfield, there again I was told that every student masters or PhD. Cranfield does not have an undergraduate course, so they have only masters courses. So, every student from the aerospace department, especially college of aeronautics gets 2 hours free on this aircraft called as a Beagle Pup. So, I have flown 2 hours, 2 flights, 1 hour each on a Beagle Pup aircraft and uh, this is my flying experience, right. These are my contact details. If anybody wants to note down the email address, uh, the phone number. Okay, let us look at the list of books which are recommended for this course. These are available to you, you do not have to really copy them down because the list of books is available in the courses study bulletin which is available online. The most uh, popular book is the book by J.D. Anderson, Introduction to Flight that is where the title comes from. So, soft copies are available, we will follow the 7th version, seventh edition not this one, this is the old edition. So, if you give an internet search on the author's name, you will get the soft copy of the 7th edition free. Therefore, nothing, uh, there is no need for you to worry, it is easily available. There is a book by Francis J. Hale on performance, selection and design, which is also an interesting book. We have one copy of that in our departmental library, we also have copies in the main library. And then Bernard and Philpont another interesting book on aircraft flight. But actually you may not really need to go for any specific thing except the first book which will contain specific contents which I will encourage you to read. I do not think you need to really make any effort to acquire these books. If you want we can make it available to you but do not worry too much, do not go and buy them and all that, they are not needed that much. Thank you.